And there she comes. Now. Soon. She's on her way. <laughs> I know. I got here. I got here. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? That's right. Amen. I know. I actually, um, it's funny because this topic was something that we were kind of circling with Sister Daniela and Deacon. And um, I remember when I first uh, talked about it or kind of mentioned it, Deacon's like, can you do it this Thursday? And I was like, what? No. No. And I don't mean no because I wasn't prepared, but in the sense of like, I wanted... Like, I remember telling him, I just don't think finances is spiritual enough for a Thursday night, right? And then he's like, but I feel like when we come to our finances, there's fear involved. And fear is our spirituality realm, right? And I said, you're right. So I said, let me discern, let me pray, and I'll get back to you. And surely enough, on Sunday, I was like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> so um, that's how this came about. But... I have to say that even preparing for this, it was an, it was a beautiful journey with God because like I said, finding the spirituality side of our money is something that I had never really truly like I didn't dive into it as much as I did this time, you know, because I really wanted to understand God, what, what is it exactly? How do finances play in our spirituality? Right. I know we talked about, like I said, the possibility of there being fear around it. But how does it really touch us when we when we don't have fear? And and so that's that's kind of what what today's about is not really me talking, but being more interactive with you guys. So give me two seconds. That's why you guys have Bibles. So you guys can follow me along. So let me ask you, let me get started with this. Um. How many of you have some kind of goal that requires the financial security? Like maybe buying a house, buying a car, something that requires financial security. So most of us in this room, right? How many of us just want to be able to have enough money to have a decent life? That's all of us. Good. Then, then, then we're on, then we're on the right track. Sorry. Hold on. Okay, there we go. So then we're on the right track. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions that I had to ask myself for this topic was how, how do I apply my relationship with God into my finances? Because I don't think I've ever done that before. I apply my relationship with God and everything else when I'm a daughter, when I'm a sister, when I'm a friend or coworker. I apply God into that. But how do I apply it when it comes to my money? And some of you may or may not know, but I actually do have right now of um, that's my career. I am in finances and being in financial planning. I've learned that most of us are not any different than the, than, than our neighbor. And a lot of our finances is from what we learn at home from our parents or from our friends, or sometimes at school, cause we get lucky and we take good classes, like maybe business, if you really want to learn about it or maybe finances. So looking at our finances with God meant implying, how am I managing my finances? How am I with my own money? So being able to understand our own discipline with ourselves is how I am able to associate the discipline being extended into our finances. Does that make sense? So I'm going to get started with really quickly, sorry with these, um, I guess you could say, um, bullet points. How can I have a healthy relationship with my money? If I'm living in a culture where everything is telling me you got to have the latest 
phone. You have to have the latest shoes. Some guys are into shoes or girls too, or purses, or you have to drive a nice car. That's the big one. It doesn't have to be new, but it has to be a nice car. How do I live that life and live it in a way that's healthy? Cause let me tell you something. And the, and, and, and this is, and this is where I, I was so like taken back because God gives us the ability to produce wealth and that's through our work. And some of us work harder than others to be able to save, to be able to buy all those nice things. But then what happens when the wealth that I'm receiving from my job, no matter how low or how high your pay is, is getting misused in the sense of you're buying things that aren't bringing you any, any, any happiness. And when I say happiness, I mean the same type of happiness that God gives you the lasting happiness, because I can buy a purse and it'll be momentarily. I can buy a car. Okay. It might be lasting a little bit longer, but eventually I'm going to want a new one. I'm going to buy shoes. I'm going to buy a hat. I'm going to buy clothes and it's all going to be instant gratification. But what God is saying is What he's calling us to do is, yes, I bless you in wealth. I got, I, I do give you the, the prosperity to be abundant, but you also have to share it. You also have to give it back. And how many of us are told, uh, pues ahí viene la colecta. Let's be generous with it. And I don't mean here, by the way, I mean at church too, right? I was, I was reflecting on this on Sunday because I realized, you, please don't raise your hand. This is not, that's not what this, this, this part is about. But how many of you still see people giving dollars for, to the church? How many of you still give a dollar to the church? That's where you don't have to raise your hand. And okay, exactly. That's what we, that's what we, that's what I still see too. And it, I st- it took a step back and I thought about it and I'm like, in this day and age, what is the church going to do with a dollar? <laughs> I can't even go to McDonald's and buy myself anything for a dollar. What is the church going to do? I mean, the church uses the money to keep the lights on. Sower uses this money to stream, to buy shirts, to evangelize. Like, what is the church going to do with a dollar, right? So I just realized, like, Lord, it's because back in the day, that's what worked. And we just stuck with it, right? And now, the same way that I had to take a step back and realize, oh my gosh, my finances have changed too. I need to change my finances with my giving. So how, how do I do that? How do we how do we find a way to be more generous, but at the same time not feel like, oh man, this is going to hurt? Well, the number one thing that you have to do is realistically make your own budgets budgets are your best friends i wish somebody would have taught me how to budget when i was in high school seriously budgets are your best friends because and this is something actually i my mom right now would probably if she heard me would be like i was trying to teach you how to budget but you didn't let me (laughs) that's true because my mom's a very good at budgeting but Um, budgets are very good because that's how you get to distribute your wealth. And that's what the Bible tells us. God calls us to be generous. God calls us to, to distribute the abundance and wealth that he gives us. I want to, um, if you can open your Bibles to Ecclesiastes 5. And I'm going to start with verse 9 of Ecclesiastes. Yes, verse 9. Whoever loves money will not be satisfied with money whoever loves wealth hasn't sufficient income this is senseless 
And then I'm going to go to number 12. There is a great evil I found under the sun. The rich man who kept his wealth to his own harm. A mistaken investment and these riches are lost. A son is born, but there is nothing to leave him. Naked he came from his mother's womb and he returns as he came naked. Nothing of this fruit of his toil is he able to take with him. And then I'm going to go down to 19. I'm sorry, 18. And when God gives a man riches and property with the possibility of enjoying them and being happy in his work, this is a gift from God. As long as God keeps him occupied in the gladness of his heart, he is not concerned about how long he will live. The word of God. You guys hear what he says? When God gives a man riches and property with the possibility of enjoying them and being happy in his work, this is a gift from God. So basically what he's saying is, it's okay if you give me things in abundance. I just have to make sure that I am honoring you with it, that I'm sharing it for your glory. And true story, I have family members that have been very good with their finances, have paid off their homes, have enough money in the bank to go buy a cash, um, a car cash, but have no love for their family have no there's no god in them for their family does that make sense and that's what we have to be careful with as we want more things as we become more prosperous in your jobs and your careers that you make sure that you're keeping that and so going back to to what i was sharing about you know the, what i realized this sunday how we still give a dollar i thought about the the widow you guys know the story of the widow? She gave her last, and we're, and I'll go to that scripture a little later, but she gave her last. And while the riches, you know, the rich people were giving also, but she gave everything that she had. And whenever I find myself at church and I see only a dollar, I think back, no, I have to give you everything I have because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have what I have. You wouldn't have the job, right? We, I, I wouldn't have the job that I have. Like it's, it's because of him that I have work. It's because of him that I get to get up every day and glorify him with my job. He can take it away, guys. He can take anything away. So, and then I, it made me think, have I ever gone unsheltered? Have I ever gone without a warm bed? Have I ever gone without food? I might have gone without a burger and fries, but I've never gone without food. It might have been rice and beans at home, but I never gone without food. So then it makes me, it, it, it just made me realize like, why do I have to worry about it? Why do I have to worry about my finances? So every, every time that, that I get paid, I, tr I, I set aside, I budget. Okay, this is how much came in. This is this is how much I'm going to give to charity. And it doesn't have to be, by the way, I distribute, this is a personal thing. I distribute my budget of, uh, that's designated for, for, for the church into different things. So the amount that I set aside can go part of it to the church and part of it to Catholic charities. So you don't have to feel like, man, but she told me that, you know, the Bible says to give, but I already gave what I set aside. Now I got to come up with more. No, you can do that. We don't have to be, we don't have to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, irresponsible with it. But the idea is that you start slowly becoming more aware of how much God truly blesses you and not become because what I'm afraid of that I've seen a lot of is as we get more, we start becoming a little bit more, um, is the word fringe? Frugal. <laughs> Frugal. Like it's okay for you to realize what you're spending your money on. But more importantly, it's important for you to realize what you're doing 
with that money? How is it glorifying God? Right? So we talked about how to manage money in times of abundance. Now let's talk about how do we trust God in the times of needs? How many of you have a hard time with that one? <laughs> I know I do. I have. I, so we lose a job. We don't know where the next paycheck's going to come from. And the responsibilities are still there. Some, some of us are old enough to have kids and families and responsibilities. And we still have to figure out how we're going to take care of those responsibilities. Some of us don't have kids or families, but we still have to figure out how to put gas in the car, how to make the, the insurance payment, how to take care of the cell phone bill because that can't go unpaid. God forbid they turn off my cell phone. Everything, just like in our spiritual, um, you know, daily, daily affirmations and prayers, everything has an order and a purpose. So whatever you give value to monetarily or materialistically is what's going to reflect also in your spirituality. So the idea of our finances and God is to be able to find that balance. Does that make sense? Um, and I'll let you guys on this, on this topic, I'll let you guys kind of answer that. How do, how do you trust God in a time of need when it's financially hard? Anybody have? I feel like it's, that's where your faith gets in because I mean, it's God's then you know you'll you'll know you're for sure gonna know that one way or another you don't know how it's gonna happen but through faith you know that he will give you uh what you need maybe not what we desire but what we need at, maybe at that moment at that time to just get by but I feel like sometimes in that, in that, in those moments, I feel God let us, lets us pass through those moments of like, you know, um, I call it the beautiful struggle of like need because through those moments, um, you can actually grow and, and value, uh, more things. I, I have a personal, I mean, I've gone through that, so I can speak from it. I don't know if, if everybody, um, probably like three years ago, I quit my job and I told God that I was going to preach for him for one year. So how was I going to pay for my bills? How was I going to pay for my food? How was I going to pay for my cell phone? I was literally, whatever people would provide in the preachings, I wouldn't ask. I would never go to some to a church and be like, uh, I charge this much or I ask this donation. I would never ask nothing. And some some people would give me, some people won't, you know, and I would just take it and how you said, distribute it, you know, I said cuentas and I would have to distribute my money. But at the end of the day, God sent me those the correct people with good and generous hearts and they would pay for my cell phone. They would literally, I wouldn't, no one would know that I wasn't working, but here would come a lady, Como te puedo ayudar, mijo? can I pay your cell phone? I knew that was God sending me that lady because how did she know that my phone was turned off already for like three weeks? How did, you know, and God would provide and, and I would have, I would say, yes, as, as embarrassing, you don't want to tell people like, Hey, I'm broke. Right. But, but you know, that's how God is. He, he'll send you what you need in those times and moments. And God provided, I, I, from, from like, I lived this. So God sustained me for one year as I took care of his stuff, which was, you know, the preaching stuff. And the prayer and, you know, giving back to the community and to those in need. And he took care of my stuff, you know, and yeah. 
it goes back to what I just said, right? Like you trusted God and you basically said you take care of the earthly things while I take care of your spiritual things, right? I, while I take care of, of, of your kingdom. And that takes a lot, by the way, because I've been there. And, and, and it's a level of faith that don't do it intentionally. That's not what I'm trying to say. Don't purposely go quit your job and, and see if God will provide for a year. That's what God put in, in, in your heart, right, brother? That's what God put in his heart for, but the point, the point that I'm trying to make is, Try to see those God moments in, in your finances. Does that make sense? Like whenever you feel like, man, I only got $12 in my bank account and I need to get, you know, I, I'm not going to get paid till four more days. Lord, you know that I need to get to work. He's going to take care of it. He's going to put somebody in your, in your path. To, hey, come on. Let's go put gas in your car or whatever. And you're like you said, you're going to know that person was sent from God. But it's only when you put your faith in God. Does that make sense? Like it's 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 understanding that, yes, I need I need to get to work. So, yes, I need gas. But then you have to trust. OK, he's going to take care of it for me. What 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 what, what is my responsibility? Get up in the morning, get dressed, get ready, go to work. Go to work with the best intentions. <laughs> and I say that too because I know I, this might derail a little bit, but guys, if you're not doing what you love, maybe it's time to discern what you're doing. If you just have a job because you need to pay the bills, continue. I'm not saying quit your job, right? I'm saying continue to pray to God and ask him, what do you want me to do? That's going to be work, but glorify you at the same time. I do that every day. Every day. I, I try, I should say I should try because I'm not perfect at it, but almost every day I, rem, I, I remind myself and I talk to God and I tell him, help me to understand where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to talk to? And if this is still the career that you want me to be in. And that's important because throughout our lives, you're going to have different careers, some of us. And that's important to understand that sometimes when you, especially, you don't have to raise your hand, but if you've been fired, that is the worst feeling in the world. Especially when you know you've put in all your work and all your, all your, you know, all your good intentions. But that's also some way of God saying, it's because I don't want you there. Does that make sense? So... With what brother said, I want to go to Luke 12, verse 28. You know, your Bible, it sounds different. It does? I'm sorry. Oh. Last week I was saying the same thing, sorry. When, when, when I was following Deacon, Deacon and I were on the same. Yeah. 12, verse 28. Luke is where all the Gospels are. <laughs> 1162. 1162. No, 1128. 1128. You said 12. I did. I'm sorry, 12. You're right, you're right. 1224. 1228. The page. You're saying the page number. Oh, you're saying the page. Oh, got it. Thank you. I'm like, I'm not good at Chapter 12, verse 28. And this falls under the topic of dependence on God. Well, can we start at 22? Let me back up a little. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life and what you will eat or about your body and what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body is more than clothing. Notice the ravens, they do not sow or reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. How much more important are you than birds? 
Can any of you be worrying at a moment to your lifespan? If even the smallest things are beyond your control, why are you anxious about the rest? Now notice how the flowers grow. They do not toil or spin, but I tell you, not even Solomon in and, and all of his splendor was dressed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass in the field that grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O oh, you of little faith? The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let me go back to that part. If God so clothes the grass in the field that grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O oh, you of little faith? What do you think God is trying to tell us there? What, do you think that, what does that mean? Oh, if God so clothed the grass in the field that grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, what is he telling us? Mm -hmm. We're worth so much more. So, sorry. So, when I like to think about the hard times, I always think about I'm worth so much more, so I'm going to be okay. When I think about the hard times, I think, like I told you, I take it as a time of, it's time to reflect, it's time to pray, and it's time to discern. What do you want from me? There's something he's trying to tell us when going, where we're going through hard times. How do you apply that? Obedience is through discernment, through prayer, through fasting. And that... Don't you already do that when you're afflicted with like something from, from your heart? When you're, when you're lose, when you lost someone, when you're going through, through grief, when you're going through hurt and pain, don't you already do that? Don't you already pray fast to find out what it is that God wants you to learn from that pain? So it's the same thing that he's telling us with regards to our material and our finances. Just, I'm going to take care of you. Don't have little faith. Um, I'm going to tie this up a little bit to um, things that matter. I mean, finances and how to how to how to discern and see what matters. So, please start telling me things that you need every day that you can't live without. Did you say cats? No. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I can't live without my pets, but okay. <laughs> sorry, I hear cats. Makeup, okay. <laughs> what else? What else do you need every day? water. So all of you right now can live without your phones? Oh, yeah. I can. You can live without it. But it's hard. You need to do it without it. That's what I'm saying. I mean... You can put it in the The internet. Can oh, what's the internet? The internet. Yes. 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 Coffee. Coffee, yes. Um, subscriptions, right? And what, what, what did you? Oh, coffee. Someone said coffee. Yeah, <laughs> that was a hard one. Medication, medication. Huh? Okay. So these are the things you can't live without, right? Thank you. God. Oh, yeah. wow. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Because no, this is this is this this is the point of this. 
Our first thoughts go to the material. That's our first thought. Why? Why do you? Th this is psychology, by the way. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Not just that, but it's tangible. It's things I can see. It's things I can touch. It's things I can feel. Do I wake up and see God standing there? I mean, you can, but literally, like, can I really, really, really see like a human like I see my mom? No. Do I hear him like I hear my mom? <laughs> Once you get into prayer, maybe, yes. I agree with you. But but it takes it takes a process. I have to wake up first. <laughs> and of these things, how much of it requires money? Let's see. Does food require money? Yes. yes. Gas? Yes. Music? Yes. Not really. Not really. You could just sing. You could sing in the shower. Only if you have a subscription, but the radio is free. The radio is free. I'm about to sing right now like it's free. Clothes? Yes. Makeup? Yes. Water? Yes. Is it requires no. money? No, you can go to the park and drink. <laughs> no, he's right. He's right. A home? <laughs> yes. A phone? Yes. Yes. Internet, yes. electricity, yes. subscriptions. Yes. No. Does it require money? A subscription, oh, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. coffee. Yes. <laughs> he is free. Brother, can I get a napkin? I, I don't see an eraser. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's not free? God is not free. God is not free. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. God? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't wake up and God doesn't go $2 to talk to me. I don't know what God you talk to. No, 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 no. Right, right, and whether you give or not, the church is going to find a way to always keep going, or at least try, but here's something, guys, these are the tangible things, what else is tangible, and I'm glad you brought it up, because that's, that, that's what I was going to tie this to, the church, the building, this building that we're in, this is all tangible things, and this costs money. And if we are able to be blessed with work and we're able to be blessed with getting up and being able to honor God with our work, wouldn't I want to honor him back by giving back? You know, so all of this, if you're telling me you can't live without this, that means he's providing it for you already, right? Maybe one month, maybe this got to go. Maybe one day this has to go. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to be able to have it every day, right? But if I need to get to work, I need this every day. This, like I said, it may not be in and out, but it might be frijoles con arroz at home, but I'll have it. This, this, I, I guess it's been, I mean, I've had my phone broken. I've had my phone broken. I can't use it until I can repair it. The internet, I feel like I can go anywhere now and get free Wi-Fi. Electricity, yeah, if you don't pay the bill, you don't have electricity. Clothes, man, I feel like I can go to, right now, I can go, I shouldn't say pretend, but I could go somewhere where they have clothes donations and get clothes for free. Even makeup. <laughs> they'll, they'll give you free makeup. They have all kinds of things. At these donations, yes. And you get, yes. Girl, girls find a way. Your home. Even if it's the home of your, of your relative or of your grandparent, God always has a home for you. So these are the things that we can say can be free. 
even food. Gosh, we go and we serve the homeless. Don't you think that if we needed to, we, we can have it for free? Well, this isn't going to be for free. Can you guys live off of food, gas, clothes, makeup, and a home? <laughs> but if this is all you were given, can you live off of this? Well, back in the day, you gotta think about it before all that was added up to the list. Nowadays, people live with the simplest things, mm -hmm. which was your just regular clothes, uh, barely any makeup. Now we have like exclusive makeup and <laughs> gas. There would gas didn't exist like that. True. But everything was horses. it was it was all animals and walking. So and you could bike. We yeah. can bike now. I mean, we could live <laughs> with a with a minimal, but we're gonna go back to old time living. So let me ask you this: Can you walk anywhere? Yes. Or roll anywhere? Yes. Everywhere. I have to make sure I include everyone. <laughs> can you get fed? Yes. yes. Can you get a shelter provided? I'm sure there's a. Yeah, it'll be hard, but it, yes. Exactly. The point is, you're always going to be taken care of, and you always have been. You don't necessarily have the same amount as some of other brothers and sisters. That's not the point. The point is, the more that we become more generous in giving what God has blessed us with, the more we're going to start to see the blessings within ourselves. One way or another, God is always going to take care of you. But the key thing, and this is why it's very, very, it's a fine line. When God is good to us in the prosperous times, we have to remember to give it back. Pay it forward. And I'm not telling you that because that's my philosophy. I'm telling you that because he says so in the Bible. Because he's telling you, you can have it, but you have to pay it forward. And that's a hard thing that I'm finding right now to teach our youth with my nieces and my nephew because, oh, mom, I want the latest phone. Oh, tia, I want these Nike B whatever Yeezys and all this. And I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> like, that's great that you want them. No. We have a generation that isn't able to see the struggle because our parents were able to come and bring us somewhere where we are rich. Let's be honest. We are rich. We have a lazy generation. We have a lazy generation. That doesn't want to work or that doesn't want no, to. No, they, they think that, oh. they, yeah, they think that, uh, you know, they want to stay to the trends, but, you know, those trends cost a lot of money. Like, let's be realistic. You know, I grew up in a very poverty. I grew up in the trailers where the, tra the trailer was not bigger than this room. And it was me, my sister, my mom, and my dad. And we grew up in that trailer until I was pretty big until we upgraded. So... Um, you know, it was a luxury to get a new toy to, you know, like any video game. We didn't have none of that. We were like with the basics, marbles, pogs, Pokemon cards, basic, basic, basic things. And nowadays, like the kids nowadays, they're like, I need the newest iPhone. They don't even want the, uh, any phone. They want the newest phone. I know. They want the best internet and they want like the nicest shoes. Um, if it's not materialist, like clothes, if they're into video games, they want to buy all these crazy skins and features and bundles for Minecraft. Yeah. All, there's a lot of, a lot of other ways, but you know, I have kids. So when my kids, when, they both play game video games. I remember my oldest, he would break his controller and I'd be like, why'd you break it? Because I lost. And I, and I would tell him, I was like, and I used to work construction where I would have to work outside and sweat, eat dirt, like for this controller. And I was like, you know how long I had to work 
shoveling dirt to buy you that controller. And they would be like, oh, but you'll buy me another one. Like, and it was, it was very, like, I would get mad and I would punish them and I wouldn't get him no control for three months. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> have him shovel the dirt. <laughs> no, but you know, I, I just feel from, from what I see on the social media and from my family and like what's around me. Like how, like this generation just, it's easy. Like, dame, 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 ama, pa. And, and for Christmas, they, they ask for crazy things, but they don't do nothing the whole year. Like, you know, they, like them as kids, I get it. They're going to be kids, but they have to give back to and what doing their chores, being a good kid, following their mom and dad's instructions, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that calls, kind of falls into that. But from what I've seen, lazy generation. So let me ask you guys this, because the whole point of us coming here is not just to receive from God. It's also to put us to work for God. How do you guys see us as young adults helping this new generation? Um, for example, in my in my house. It was, um, it was me and my two brothers and my dad was the main breadwinner. My mom worked too. I um, think she was a, a nanny, but it was not like all the time. And so my dad, we would know that he will sacrifice a lot for us because he would have two jobs in order for us to have everything. But one thing that my dad taught us was to be humble. So he will let us know, like, okay, like I have two jobs so I can give you this and this. And I, I didn't, I had everything. I don't think I ever needed or wanted or any doll or anything that I wanted. I always had it, but he would make sure to tell me, like, I work hard for you to have this. So it was kind of like, I appreciated it more and I took care of it because I knew my dad worked hard for me to get it. And then as we got older, um, he would take us to uh, Mexico uh, for Christmas and we wouldn't get presents. We will buy presents for all our cousins because we are, oh, well, my mom's side of the family, they're very poor. So he, my dad will make us buy presents for my cousins because he will tell us, you see, like they don't have nothing and you have everything. You can get everything that you want during the whole year. So instead of you getting a present this Christmas, you're going to buy a present for your cousin. So then we will go and then we will give presents to our cousins. So then we will see how happy they will get to receive a present that they might have not gotten that year. And it was thanks to us. So now that I have my nephew, I tell that to my brother. <laughs> I tell him, hey, start teaching him what dad taught us because, um, he is like, you know, he's an only child. He's um, my only sobrino, so he gets spoiled a lot. But I always tell him that. When I give him something, I remind him. Like, you know, like, oh, I work hard for this. So, like, appreciate or appreciate the things you have because not everybody has what you have. So I guess it's just teaching them about that and, like, also teaching them that not everybody has, so you have to be appreciative. Yeah. I also want to add, like, from my experience with my family, like, growing up too, like, I would say we were, they were blessed. Like, we didn't have problems, like, financially, but my mom was strict, and she would never, like, we would look at, me and my brother would look at our cousins, right? They had, like, the PlayStation and all that, and we were always happy to visit them just for that reason, and it came to a point where we would look at my mom, like, why don't you buy us this, like, you know? And even if we were a good kid, she wouldn't, and it didn't make sense at the time, right? But it does now, right? Now, when when the question was asked, when you said, as us young adults that we have kids or in the future, how could we save our generation? I do believe, like, and what Mom taught us, like, really teaching our kids about God, because even in the someone can still rebel, right? There's people that rebel, and even though later their parents like, now you see what I did to you, they might be like, well, they might take it personal, like revenge, right? And and they might give their kids everything. Because it's always like that, right? They say that, oh, well, I'm going to give my kids all this because my parents never gave me this. I, you hear that a lot, but that's 
that's wrong because so the the question is it's not that's not the answer the answer is us right now they're involved in church and this is good that we're learning about god really implement that with our kids and what i mean by that is yeah discipline them but then have the reason behind the discipline which is god you know and i remember my mom used to take us all the time like also we do now when we were kids like literally eight ten we went to convalescent home we used to hate it like why are we going there like damn mom, i don't want to go like i don't want to see the old people but i every time i would come out i was like i feel good and but she was always teaching us like there's always we should be grateful all the time right like you were saying and but why and then because god like you were saying right so as we got old put it this way my first the the first system I ever bought, I bought it an Xbox when I was like 15. So and now when I look at myself, and if I got her blessed with a kid, man, I'm a tech, so I'm gonna take away all the technology. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, but but see, this is the thing. I'm gonna take those steps to be super disciplined, but I'm gonna emphasize God as the reason, because then they might get hate, right? Like, oh man, why are you so strict, Dad? Like, you don't love me. Look at all these kids. But I'm gonna emphasize. That's the number one part, right? Like we're talking about having God and that explanation, because that's gonna make them understand. You know, show them about saints. Like, like you said, what really matters in life are like the simple things, which you have the love, and not all this materialistic stuff that's really being pushed down people's throat nowadays. Like the kids, I honestly. Like a lot of families I know, the like first thing they give the kids is an iPad. And I always tell them, why you just give it to them? Oh, because I need time by myself. I need to be with my wife here. And that's not a good reasoning. Yeah, I get it. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to fall for that at a point because you want a break. But we really got to be on that because who's going to start teaching those kids? So there's like a freaking person in there telling them, oh, yeah, do this. Like, you know, believe in this. So my point is, again, like we got to be disciplined, but have God in front in the front line. Guys, thank you, brother. Thank you very much. So let me ask you guys, is having money bad? No. no. What, what's evil about money? Because in the Bible, it does say that money is the root of all evil. You let it go into your head. And, you know, some people, they don't know. Like, they never had. And when they, they have money, they don't know what to do. And that's when the addictions kicked in. And some of them, they end up losing everything because they never had. And the minute they have something, they go crazy about it. You know, if you have something, just trust, you know, pray to God to guide you. To guide you to do, like, good deeds or good stuff with that money. And most importantly... Thank you for that, sister, because praying to God what to do with that, even now, I always tell people in my field, because they're like, most of the people that, 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 that ask to sit with me, that they want to know guidance, like about financial planning, they ask me, well, I, my goal is to save. I, I, and that's really what I want to do. Or, or, or I already have saved, but it's not enough because it's not growing. It's not doing anything. So I tell people, you know, you, you have, you have the capability, like you, you have already what you want, right? But what are you doing right now? So that when you do have that money saved, when you do have the abundance to be able to put away, do you have the discipline to do, to do what's going to need Sorry, to do what you need to do with it. Like you said, instead of going crazy. Oh my gosh, I got a raise. I have an extra thousand dollars in my account. Let me, what, do, what is the first thing, at least I've seen in my family, what's the first thing that people do when like a bonus check or when taxes check come? They reward themselves. They go shopping. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, one of my first, when I was 18, I was, I, I was in a very generous job and I was making good money. I bought five pair of shoes in one month. Tell me where those shoes are. <laughs> exactly. Or somewhere donated in the landfill. The point is that if we don't start the discipline right now with our finances, same thing, like you said, Everything, everything, whether our spiritual, our prayer life, everything has to have discipline and order. If we don't start it now, when, when God blesses us with more, we don't want to fall into the temptation of being irresponsible with it. So 
How do I apply all of this? Because, go ahead. To the book of Proverbs, Proverbios, and that's, there's a lot of guidance in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, proper, actually, when I was researching about all the, uh, you know, like more verses I had to do, Proverbs came up a lot. Go ahead, and, brother. And I, I feel we need to be very, very careful with money because it, it can be uh, self-destructive. And I say it from experience because my God, before it was Jesus Christ, it was money. And I have it tatted in my chest. I have the 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 hundred C note right here in the middle of my of my whole chest. And it has a double meaning, but one of it was for money. And I would do anything for money. So money can, you know, take you to very wrong paths. Um how you think about it. Well, yeah. God created money. We need money for everything. We need money to put a roof on our head, for food, for everything. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's not money. It's how you think about money and what you do, what you do with the money. Money, cool. you could go and have a bunch of money. You could like help charities and do a lot of things. You know, it's just what you do with the money. Exactly, and that's that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it is a that's. But like I said in the very beginning, you got to be careful with it because if you're not aware of those things, how you are aware like of the goodness, and if you're not aware of what it can do to you, it, um, from my experience, it turned me into a different person because I was not aware of what you, well, of what I'm aware of now, you know? So but, but what, what Brother's trying to say basically is, Kind of back to what I, what I was trying to tie is if you don't have the discipline, if you don't have the maturity to handle money properly early on, it's going to get you into trouble later on. That's basically it. So how do I apply, uh, discipline and how do I apply maturity to my money? What was the first thing I said that you want to do? Budget. 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 No, you pray to God first before you start doing anything with it. You pray to God, you thank him for the money that he gave you, right? You thank him, you thank him because I did say that, right? I get my paycheck and I'm like, okay, God, you blessed me with this job. Now tell me what you want me to do with it, right? So that I can make it tangible so that I can see, have a visual, right? And it's not just up in the air in a dream in a cloud. I want to create a budget. So I'm going to use rough numbers, round numbers, sorry. This is how much comes in, I'm going to say. Okay. And I know that I need to, I love when Father um, Pacholi came to the last Congress and talked about this in his homily. I was moved by it. So this is what he said if, for those of you who remember and help me remember if I have it wrong. So I got my money. What's the first thing I want to pay? The dwelling that I live in. My responsibilities, electricity, the house, okay? The house bills, the house bills. We're not talking about streaming. We're not talking about internet. We're talking about the electricity, the gas, right? Okay. And then I need to also, and my car, right? And gas, all that. Okay, so I've taken care, and food, okay? So I've taken care of that. Whatever is extra from this, what do you want to do with it? What would you do with it? Be real. <laughs> no, you already put for, oh, so you're saying like go more eat. Okay. So your food is like your groceries, right? So he's saying going out to eat. I said like hang out entertainment, like have fun. To me, my, uh, instead of like, like what other people go do to go have fun, I do. <laughs> Got it. That's my fun. Eating out is your fun. I hear you, brother. I feel you on that. Yeah, we stop. 
Concerts. Okay. So all of you are talking basically entertainment and things that bring you pleasure, right? So we have our responsibilities. Well, before we think about our pleasures, because man, I worked hard. I earned this. I deserve to go eat out to go to a concert, right? That's that. Who do you think is telling us that? Exactly. So now what I have to do is even... What about when you celebrate birthdays and go to concerts and go eat? That's not the enemy, right? Well, no, no, no. Hold on. Let me, let me tell you, cause all of this has, has a place. I'm trying to tell you like, this is you guys telling me what's your first instinct that you do with the extra. I'm trying to guide you as to what comes next. Where does the extra fit in? Okay. So you have that. And then you go ahead and you put away for savings. That's what he said. Emergency savings. Some fun fact. Do you guys know how much, um, you need, especially in this city? Saved up? About 10%, right? Months and time wise. What's the recommended amount? You need at least, before the pandemic, it was three to six months of your salary. Now it's up to nine months. That means you need at least $50,000 saved to, for emergency. Exactly. I tell my clients this all the time. That's not to make you feel alert. That's just to, if you're not, if you don't have anything that you have going on, please create one. No matter how little, just make it a priority. Cause there's nothing worse than something happening and you not being able to have something to fall back on, no matter how small it is. And yes, there's people that love us around and yes, we can borrow from our relatives or they'll give us. That's great too. But it feels better when you, when you, when you're able to do it for yourself first. So now that I have my little cochinito, that's what I call it. <laughs> now that I have my little, my little, my little savings. <laughs> now that I have my little, my little fun right here. Now I can think about. <laughs> These three things are the easiest things you can focus on. <laughs> and the best part that I loved about Father's homily was, do I want to do this on a credit card? No. Do you know what he said about credit cards? Yes, point. Huh? Point. <laughs> no. He said, you, you, if you're going to put a, a vacation on a credit card, you don't go. Why, do, why do you think he, he said that, you guys? You're going to be in debt. <laughs> and, and, and maybe you don't think about it while you're on vacation. Maybe you turn it off and you're just like, man, I'm here. I deserve this. I earned this. But when you get back home, you get that consequence, right? So I always tell, by the way, I always tell this to my students when I used to teach in high school. Credit cards can be good and bad. We are in an age where credit is something that's important, but it's how you are, how you manage it. So they would tell me, what are you trying to tell me? Don't get a credit card. I'm like, yes, get it. But if you are the type of person where they're going to give you a thousand dollar credit card and you're going to max out that thousand dollars within a month or two, you have a problem. No offense. I'm just being real because then it's making, then it's creating a problem for you in the sense of that you're going to want more and you're going to want more and you're going to be, there's the saying that goes, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. And then it goes back to when they were trying to build, I forget which church of Peter and they were taking it from the other church to build that church. Yeah. Okay. Which is perfect. Cause I'm wrapping up. So, so just get your money. 
<laughs> just get your you just get your money. I personally pray about it and give thanks. And then I go ahead and I apply it to where I need to. I set aside. Now in here is it is my budget of of charity. You want to give that that's just a given. If anything that should be your first. I made this much. What am I comfortable now? Should be ten percent, right? I was gonna say, I I, I was like, oh, I didn't I didn't get it. Um, the the biblical verse where it's ten percent. That's why it's called diezmo. So if I made a thousand dollars, what's ten percent? It's one hundred dollars. So automatically, a hundred dollars needs to go back to God to charity somehow. Whether it's twenty five to the parish. 25 to sewers, 25 to the nuns, whatever I want to, it's up to you. But automatically 10%. And then, um, after all of this, does that mean that I should be going on vacation and running out of money or do I, or should I be growing this? Your okay, what happens if I finally get it to a healthy place? Like I have a good amount. Yeah, you can pleasure. But let's say I don't want to go on vacation. I'm done. Like I'm not done. Like I'm not interested. Just keep growing. Just keep growing it. Okay. I can give more to charity. You can give more to charity. Okay. My point of this is. Yes, you continue to grow this, but as you grow it, become more selfless with it, become more generous with it. The reason I'm saying that is because that's where it becomes borderline. Um, the wealthy will not inherit, you know, will not go into the Greedy. kingdom of God. So that's kind of how this works. Um, <laughs> I have a uh, uh, to 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 before before I before I uh, I close this up. If you do have credit cards, hi JJ. Monitor your credit. Pay attention to it. It's very important. Unfortunately, we do live in a time where there's a lot of hacking and a lot of identity theft. So keep an eye on that. Just because you think you don't have that much money in the bank doesn't mean they're not trying to get get to you. Um, for me. Finances is also as just as important as our discipline with God, because I also believe in protecting ourselves. We protect our cell phones. You protect your car. You protect what other else is required of us? The car, the cell phone, health. our health. But yet when our time is up, we don't have life protection. And those are your health over money. That's Money right. comes in, comes back, and goes, but your health is priority. What, what is that saying? You spend your youth uh, work. Spend your. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's true. So I'm a huge advocate for life protection because sadly we are a culture that doesn't really understand how it works. And I think it's important for us to understand it. Um, I don't think it's something that's a taboo. The reality is we're all going to die. It doesn't matter how old or young. Some of you know the, the recent losses that I suffered. And for my 28-year-old cousin, we all pitched in. For my 92-year-old aunt, the family pitched in. 30 grand to ship her. To her country. It's not cheap, guys. But she was blessed with, like, my aunt had 10 kids, and I'm one of the nieces, and God knows how many other grandchildren. But anyway, my point is have these conversations too with your parents or your kids. Talk about it, have conversations about it. And the reason why is because I feel like, just like uh, anything else, we, we, we see like finances almost like it's, uh, as uncomfortable as talking about our puberty. 
I don't know why. I'm being serious. I have people that say they don't talk about those things with their parents. <laughs> So, so don't be afraid with your finances. Have conversation with, with your families. Have conversations with your parents, especially if your parents are older and you know that the responsibility is going to fall on you somehow or your siblings. Have those conversations with your siblings. Mom, dad, what do we have in place? What's going to happen? Who's going to take care of what? Because by the way, if you think of GoFundMe, did you know that they, they, they don't give you all the money, right? Did you know that? Besides the cut, they give it to you in installments. So if your family needs is putting a GoFundMe because they want 30 grand or however much your burial is going to cost, they're not going to give you 30 grand just like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm always an advocate of figuring, uh, not figuring it out, but uh, figuring ways to have things for yourself and not depend on a system. I do not, I do not, I'm sorry, but I do not believe that the government created a system to help us when it's emergencies and is needed, but I don't believe that that should be the only dependence that we have. It's there, yes. I, I, I've I, seen when the system kicks in for the right reasons and it should be temporary. It shouldn't be something that should be permanent. Because that's another thing with our parents. They think that... Um. Oh, when I get there, you know, Medicare, Medi-Cal. But my friend, and I only share this because <clears throat> my friend's going through it with his grandmother. Um, she's 95. She had hip surgery. Um, they never got any kind of own. She just has Medicare, right? Medicare insurance. Well, they don't cover they don't cover her, her, her long-term care. They're only giving her like a hundred days. And if she doesn't get well, boop, she's out. And then the family has to figure it out. And so it, we're in a country that has abundance of resources, abundance, and they don't have to be government, uh, provided. So that's it for me, guys. Any questions, thoughts? Thank you for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's not the most fun, but it is important. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I, I didn't see any of them all giving to, giving to God or giving to the church. Oh, we, we talked about that. Absolutely, absolutely. And by the way, um, by the way, I want to stand on this chair. Can I stand on this chair? <laughs> <laughs>